Hello, everybody. My name is B5. You might have heard me earlier. Um, and today I have the distinct pleasure of introducing some new stuff. Uh, new stuff day is my favorite day. And uh, yeah, today I have the distinct honor of doing not one but two things because we're going to talk about an implementation of IPFS. But for you to really get the full context, we need to tell you who's making it. And for that, we get to introduce a new company, which is fun. Um, so let's start with number zero, which is actually, in fact, the name of the company. Uh, number zero was incorporated on April 1st as NO Inc. in the state of Delaware. Uh, April Fool's Day it was a great day to name your company No Incorporated. Uh, felt right, but we have not been in, uh, around for long, and we're a relatively small team. We're these four people uh, for the moment. If you're in the IPFS community, you may recognize some of these faces. A number of us have been working in and around IPFS for years, years and years. Um, number zero, we're not going to talk about the company too much, but the bit that you need to know is we're really kind of focused at a high level on building efficient distributed systems. And efficiency is the key word we want to key on. Uh, we're really, as a team, very interested in the idea of considering the efficiency equation holistically. So you can optimize for performance. You can optimize for decentralization. We want to opt optimize for the idea of something being wildly efficient, like the most resource efficient we can think about it. And we haven't finished any of the work here yet, but like we're really interested in this idea of sublinear scaling, which is what happens when you sort of start to intersect the concept of efficiency with networks. Uh, we haven't even figured out how to quantify this yet, but this is the degree to which we're chasing wild ideas in the efficiency space. With that in mind, we can now get on to the actual implementation itself, uh, which we are calling IRO. Uh, IRO is a new open source implementation of IPFS. It is written entirely in Rust, because Rust is better. Fight me. Um, <laughs> the, it is open source. It's open source today, n0-computer slash IRO on GitHub. Uh, we're targeting an actual release uh, sometime in the end of this year. The reason we say actual release is if it isn't documented, it doesn't exist. And so until the documentation is up and ready, uh, it's not done in our eyes. We have three high-level goals for the project. Uh, it's got to be efficient, it's got to be robust, and it's got to be platform-specific. Um, in terms of efficiency, we are building the most efficient implementation of IPFS on any planet. This is our high-level goal. This is what we want to sort of accomplish. We have been measuring everything since day one. So far, the numbers are in. We're not the most efficient implementation today, but we're doing pretty well. Uh, this is, again, when you start thinking in terms of efficiency, we just take the number of requests a second, which is sort of the requirement of it, and peg it at 1,000 and ask for 100 megabyte files. And this is how IRO is performing today. Um, we're sort of hitting 80% CPU usage. We want to be, uh, our memory consumption is a little lower. And our average latency, interestingly, is a little bit higher. So we won't lie to you when the numbers aren't entirely in our favor. but we're pretty proud of this after, what has it been? A couple of months. In terms, of, now, just because something's efficient doesn't mean you can't, when you get an efficiency gain, you can take that and just dump it into throughput. So we're doing all right on throughput already as well. I should not mention sort of what these are showing. Uh, we have built a gateway. And a gateway is really to make us comparable to other implementations. The gateway checker or the gateway comparison tools are really robust, and so this is where we start. Uh, we have a bunch of tests that we run that we'll get into more details in a talk tomorrow uh, in the connecting IPFS track that Case is giving. Uh, but we measure a bunch of gateways around there. We've learned a whole bunch of things about what gateways work and what don't. But when you actually start deploying stuff, when you actually start looking at network infrastructure, uh, there's a lot of things that go into that equation. But the takeaway for us so far is we're already developing, delivering consistently faster than IPFS.io and DUAB.link. Uh, we haven't obviously tested that with the same level of load that IPFS.io and dweb.link have, um, but one day maybe. Um, when we say robust, uh, we want to be able to do fewer things, and we want to do them with a higher level of polish. The, we're really aiming for that it just works experience with this project, and that's really important to us, to the point that we are not going to support the entire section of, sec of utility or set of features that go IPFS. Uh, that Kubo supports. Um, but the things that we do support, we're going to do them really well. And we're going to pay attention to them and really make sure that they're executed to a high level of, of uh, excellence. And then last but not least, we think platform specific. And what we mean really by this is build to the platform. So the platforms that we want to support, we want to take this core set of code and actually write to an intended platform. And so for that, the easiest way to sort of describe that is through IRO Cloud, which is 
IRO for the cloud platform specifically. Uh, it's got a number of sort of things that come out when you start to say we're going to take a core code base and target it at a platform. These are the things that we're kind of optimizing for. Uh, the most important one is actual horizontal and vertical scaling. So we've actually taken what would normally be inside of Kubo and broken it out into separate processes that are then talking over gRPC to each other. Uh, the upside of this is it behaves a lot more like a traditional cloud uh, set of tools. You have horizontal and vertical scaling. So the gateway itself, you can scale any one of these pieces you can scale. And uh, hopefully you can pick up on this, but you can start to stick things in between those services and actually do what you need to to get this to behave the way that you want. Um, we'll go into more detail on this in another talk. Um, that's why it's going to be composable. This is why you check your slides beforehand. Um, but yeah, that's IRO. Uh, we are, very, it's very early, but it's a new implementation of IPFS. We are aiming for these things, and yeah, we'd love to sort of get into the mix on that uh, with you this week. But I think before we even get too much farther into this, I, th I think it's fun to address this question of like, why IPFS? Why a new implementation of IPFS in 2022? And like, what's our reason for even building out this technology in the first place? And I'm really convinced of this statement that the most exciting IPF days for IPFS are ahead of us, not behind us. Uh, it can feel really exciting to see like the explosion of where IPFS has been and how far we're going. But I spend a lot of time thinking about this. Uh, I think about the adoption curve a lot. And what does it mean to drive a protocol deep into the early majority? So the idea where we're thinking of tens, hundreds of millions of IPFS nodes or IPFS oriented systems um, and what it takes to get us there. And so as a community, I'm really excited to sort of like understand how do we drive when the slope of that curve is really hard to sort of get through and how do we get over this thing called the chasm that I will rant about a lot this week, if you ask me. Um, so for that, we need to sort of come up with some, uh, as number zero, we want to have some way to sort of contribute to that adoption curve. Um, and for that, we think that IPFS needs to be in many, many more places and more platforms. Specifically, this thing. There are 6.6 .6 billion smartphone users on the planet in 2022, and it's just point blank, got to be a thing that we solve properly. If IPFS is going to make its way down the adoption curve, we have to figure out mobile in a very serious way. And so for that, we have a zero index, three new things to talk about today. There's another platform that we've been targeting from day one, and that's IRO Mobile. And this is the same set of code that is going into IRO Cloud, but this is actually a ground up rethink of IPFS for the mobile platform. This is not take everything that we know today and just like jam it into a phone or compile down into a phone. This is think about high churn. This is think about the characteristics of a mobile device, what you can and can't do, and how you can make something that is IPFS but also runs in that environment. Um, this is early days. We are nowhere near sort of finished on this, but this is what we want to get out of it. We want it to be uh, native OS APIs, drop into IP, drop any uh, of these, Swift, Objective-C, Kotlin, or Java APIs into your uh, native app, and it won't make your phone hot, which we're, we're working on. <laughs> we're going to back it with IRO Cloud. These two services should be complementary. So when mobile application developers want to deploy an IPFS system, they're going to be able to use the cloud tooling to actually back that system. And we have some initial stuff on this already. Um, Dig, uh, Dignify Choir, who will be here later, has been working very hard for the last two or three weeks on a system called IROShare to prove out um, the whole system itself and show that we can actually make some inroads on mobile early. And so we have an actual working sort of subsystem of this today, which is a mechanism that we can use QR codes to actually drive a data transfer process that utilizes a whole host of technologies that we all know and love inside of the IPFS universe to do data transfer across devices uh, seamlessly. This is working today. We have uh, a version of this that is running and relatively efficient. We're starting to measure it. Um, but we're very excited to talk about this very early thing. This, we're at sort of at the demo phase for this. And so over the week, we'd love to show you IROShare, um, getting it on our actual devices. But we have big plans for this and very serious ambitions for what we think this can do to drive IPFS the protocol down the adoption curve toward the early majority. So just a quick gloss. We're very excited. We've got three new things to show and work on and get your feedback on. Uh, we are really fired up about where things are going. The last couple of months have been some of the most exciting months I've spent working in the IPFS world. And I'm really excited to chat with all of you about how this could work. So we're brand new. 
we don't even have like a website yet, so we're, we're gonna get there, but uh, this is us. Thanks a lot. <laughs>